Back in the vein of simplifying expressions, when any time that we have a mathematical expression, we'd always like to write it in a, in, in a nice, clear, concise, consolidated way. And we'd like to write it in such a way that if someone else was looking at a similar expression, they would know if it was equal to the same thing or not. One of the things that we always like to do in a variable expression, when we have variables like this, is we would like to try to combine things as much as we can. If you look at a problem like this, 3x plus 5, minus 8x plus 7. Notice we have lots of different terms here. Now if we were following order of operations, generally what we would have to do is we'd have to do any multiplications in the problem first before we could do any additions or subtractions. Right now that would mean you'd have to multiply 3 times x, but I don't know what x is. So I can't really do that very well, And I, but I'd still like to be able to see if are there things that I can combine. Can I make this a nicer looking expression? Well, one of the things that we're allowed to do is we're allowed to combine things that are like terms. So what makes something a like terms or a like term? Um, things are like terms if they are constant terms. So we can add plain numbers with other plain numbers. So for example, in this problem here, we could add the 5 and the 7 together. And, that, and those would be considered like terms that we would be allowed to combine. The other things that we can do is we can combine variable terms that have the same letters, same variables, and the same powers. So for example, we could add an x squared with another x squared, or a y to the fifth with another y to the fifth. Um, but the, the variables and the exponents of those variables need to be exactly the same for you to do that. Now, as long as we have things that are like terms, we can just add the coefficients together that we see. Um, something to keep in mind when you're looking at a uh, polynomial expression like this one, notice that here, for example, we have 3x. And here we have 8x, but there's a subtraction in front of it. It's very important that whatever plus or minus appears in front of any value stays with it as a kind of a symbol of what, what its sign is, if it's positive or negative. So for example, when I come together and I'd, I'd like to put things together, I can put the 3x minus 8x together to get a negative 5x. I take the 3 and the minus 8 and put the, those coefficients together and keep the variable along for the ride. Then I can put together the 5 and the 7 gives me a positive 12. So I'm going to come over here and write that as a plus 12. So I still have my separated terms, but any like terms that I had have been combined in the simplest way possible. I can't put this together. I can't put the negative 5 and the 12 together because they do not have the same um, variable. So that's as far as we can get. Um, with this other example here, notice we have x's and we also have y's. Here we have an x and a y together, and that's fine. We would like to put together as many of these terms as we can, so we look for like terms. Here I have a 3x squared, and if I glance through, I notice I have another x squared term here. So like terms need to have the same variable with the same power. So to put those together, 3x squared plus 2x squared gives me 5x squared. And that's going to be the first term in my, in my solution here. The next piece that I have here is a 7xy. That doesn't have an xy in it. This has an x but not a y in it. And this is just a plain number. So there are no other like terms with this one that I can put together. So I just leave that as plus 7xy. Looking uh, along a little bit farther, notice that I have a minus 3 here and a minus 5 here. So make sure you're paying attention to those signs. Negative 3 minus 5 gives me a negative 8. I can combine those constant terms together uh, to get that. And then all I have left is a minus 3x that couldn't get combined with anything else. So that also has to be a part of my solution. So this would be your final answer when you come through. Now, do be aware that the order that you write things in, uh, this is kind of a weird one because we have x's and y's, but a lot of times we would like to put our powers in decreasing order. It's not necessary, but again, it's nice to know that you're looking at something that is exactly the same as what someone else does. So for example, here we'd have 5x squared. Then I could put the x term next. Make sure you keep the sign of whatever was in front of it. Minus 3x 
and then the plain terms at the end. In this case, I still had that 7xy that threw things off a little bit. But keep in mind that the order that the terms are written in in your final answer uh, doesn't necessarily need to be exactly the same, but the signs in front of each of the answers does. So these are two equivalent answers. Either one would be fine. But notice the 8 does have to be subtracted. The 3x does have to be subtracted. The 7xy does have to be added, and the 5x squared is positive. So as long as you have all of those pieces, we can write things together in this particular way.